gentlemen, officers, and soldiers, this is the most glorious day of my life. This is the day I am a border ruffian. The U.S. Marshal has just given you his orders and has kindly invited me to address you. For this invitation, coming from no less than U.S. authority, I thank him most sincerely. And now allow me, in true border ruffian style, to extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Men of the South, I greet you as border ruffian brothers. Though I have been more years than most of you, I am yet young in the same glorious cause that has made you leave your homes in the South. Boys, I am one of your number today, and today you have a glorious duty to perform. Today you will earn laurels that will ever show you to have been true sons of the noble South. You have endured many hardships, having suffered many privations on your trip, but for this, you will be more than compensated by the work you laid out by the marshal, and what you know is to be done as program of the day. Now boys, let your work be done well. Faint not as you approach the city of Lawrence, but remember your mission act with true southern heroism, and at the word spring like your bloodhounds at home upon that damned accursed abolition hole. Break through everything that may oppose your never flinching courage. Yes, ruffians, draw your revolvers and bowie knives and cool them in the heart's blood of all those damned dogs that dare to defend that damned breathing hole of hell. Tear down their boasted Free State Hotel, and, if those hellish flying Free State Soilers have left no portholes in it, with your unerring cannons make some, yes, riddle it till it shall fall into the ground. Throw the Kansas their printing presses, and let's see if any more free speeches will be issued from them. Boys, do the marshal's full bidding. Do the sheriff's entire command. For today, Mr. Jones is not only sheriff, but deputy marshal so that whatever he commands will be right and under the authority of the administration of the U.S. And for it, you will amply be paid as U.S. troops, besides having an opportunity of benefiting your wardrobes from the private dwellings of those infernal nigger stealers. Courage for a few hours, and the victory is ours. Falter, and all is lost. Are you determined? Will every one of you swear to bathe your steel in the black blood of some of those black sons of bitches? Yes, I know you will. The South has always proved itself ready for honorable fight, and you are noble sons of noble sirs. I know you will never fail, but will burn, sack, and destroy until every vestige of these northerner abolitionists is wiped out. Men of the South and Missouri, I am proud of this day. I have received the office and honor before. I have occupied the Vice President's place in the greatest republic the light of God's Son ever shone upon. But ruffian brothers, that glory, that honor was nothing. It was an empty bauble compared with the solid grandeur and magnificent glory of this momentous occasion. Here on this beautiful prairie bluff, with naught but the canopy of heaven for my covering, with the splendid Arabian charger for my seat, to whose well-tried fleetness I may yet have to depend for my life, unless this day's work shall annihilate from our western world these hellish emigrant aid poppers, whose bellies are filled with beggars' food and whose houses are stored with beechers' rifles. I say here, with the cool breeze of the morning blowing fresh upon my head, with the U.S. Marshal at my left, completely surrounded by my younger brothers, each supporting a U.S. rifle, and on the manly countenance of each, plainly seen his high and fixed determination to carry out to the letter the lofty and glorious resolves that have brought him here, the resolves of the entire South and of the present administration, that is, to carry the war into the heart of the country, never to slacken or stop until every spark of free state, free speech, free niggers, or free in any shape is quenched out of Kansas. And what is also pleasing, beyond my power of description, is the fact that having above me, as I speak, the honest sentiments of my heart, and the sentiments of the administration, and the blessed pro-slavery party throughout this great nation, is the only flag we recognize, and the only one under whose folds we will march into Lawrence, the only one under which these damned abolitionist prisoners were arrested who are now outside yonder tent endeavoring to hear me, 
Which I care not a damn if they do. Yes, these goddamn sons of damned Puritan stock will learn their fate, and they may go home and tell their cowardly friends what I say. I care not for them. I defy and damn them all to hell. Yes, that large red flag denotes our purpose to press the matter even into blood. The large lone white star in the center denotes the purity of our purpose, and the word Southern Rights above it clearly indicates the righteousness of our principles. I say under these circumstances, I am now enjoying the proudest moments of my life, but I will detain you no longer. No, boys, I cannot stay your spirit of patriotism. I can't even stay my own. Our precious time is wasting. Now hasten to work. Follow your worthy and immediate leader, Colonel Stringfellow. He will lead you on to a glorious victory, and I will be there to support all of your acts and assist as best as I may in all your acts and assist completing the overthrow of that hellish party and in crushing out the last sign of damned abolitionism in the territory of Kansas.